May I invite uh, the Good morning. Before we proceed with, uh, uh, we will continue with agenda item three. I would like to invite the secretary to provide some housekeeping announcement, please. May I provide some quick reminders for delegates, participants, joining us via the e-conferencing platform Cluedo. To select the preferred UN language, the language selector with drop-down menu is available on the lower left of your screen. When you want to make intervention, kindly click request to speak button. When the chair calls upon you to take the floor, the microphone and camera icons will turn into red. Please click and mute the microphone and turn on the video and deliver your intervention. Do not click done speaking until you have completed your intervention as this will cancel your request. Once you have completed your intervention, kindly click done speaking. For technical issues related to KUDO, kindly click technical support tab under the messaging icon and type your message there. Our technician will assist you shortly. The Secretariat will be monitoring the messaging in KUDO. However, the Secretariat kindly request that all substantive questions or intervention to be raised through your delegation by using the request to speak button only. And finally, to prevent echoes and interference, please stay on the original audio when you speak and ensure all other devices connected to KUDO in the same room are turned off. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. And uh, to continue to the statement from delegation from yesterday's session under Agenda 3, discussing document SCAP slash CMPF slash 2021 slash 2. I would like now uh, open the floor to statement from delegation. As we only have limited time, may I ask all the delegation again to kindly keep your statement within four minutes. For your information, uh, the speaking order will be statements from SCAP member states, following by associate members, permanent observers, followed by statement from designated representative of UN bodies and specialized agencies and under governmental organization, and followed by statement from representative of non-government non organization if uh, time permit. Statement will be read in the order in which they have been received by the conference officer or show up in the request to speak list. Now I would like to invite our first speaker in the, on the list, the distinguished delegates from Bangladesh. Please take the floor. On investigation, I would like to request you to incorporate the statement of our Honorable Finance Minister at the opening in the proceedings of this committee session. The unprecedented social and economic crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic has put a spotlight on the role of innovative and digital finance in, in ensuring aid for millions across the world, supporting businesses and part, protecting jobs and livelihood. The impact of the pandemic has extended far beyond the infected people due to the emergency shutdown of economic activities. Millions of families engaged in informal sectors have been affected hard economically. The government of Bangladesh came up with stimulus packages for 28 sectors, including cash aid for the most vulnerable families. Four key components have triggered to bring the innovative digital financing in Bangladesh. First, public-private partnership. The government has partnered with private mobile phone service providers to simply disburse cash aid to the families affected. Ready-made garment factories opted for the same solutions to distribute wages safely among millions of garment workers. 
mobile financial service providers disbursed US dollar 142 million aid and 2.5 million new accounts were opened to mobile financial service in less than a month. Second, policy of adaptation. All the concerned government agencies adapted policy to facilitate digital payments to respond to the disbursed fund. Third, existing infrastructure. Three enabling factors were instrumental. The telecom infrastructure and high speed connectivity rolled out throughout the country. The existing digital payment architecture and strong mobile financial service operations with a widespread as a network covering the last mile. Finally, digital KYC. Mobile financial service providers in Bangladesh have adopted digital KYC for registration without filling up a paper based document. Honorable Chair, the government has taken key interventions in promoting digital payments in response to the COVID-19. Mobile financial services monthly transaction limited increased, daily transaction limit of contactless debit and credit cards enhanced, charges of debit and credit cards payment for medicine and other essentials waivered, person to person transactions become free. The ongoing eight five year plan of the government demonstrates strategic directions for the digital economy for attaining the sustainable development goals. The government, the government has also undertaken post COVID-19 national ICT roadmap 2021 to 2025. Bangladesh has been an exception in other areas too, to unleash its highest potential using digitization to hold the momentum of the sustainable development goal progress. For example, with a view to ensuring the virtual presence of the parties, the national parliament has passed the court's use of information communication technology act 2020. The Supreme Court of Bangladesh established the virtual my court system for bail application, which reduces 12% prison population in just two months. A collective data intelligence system armed with artificial intelligence analysis of data was set up connected to all mobile phone companies. The country's largest ever telemedicine service was born almost overnight. Remarkably, 4,000 plus doctors donated free time every day to an Uber-like system during the height of the pandemic. While all tiers of education institutions have remained closed in Bangladesh, online classes have been utilized by turning the par parliament TV into an education TV. It can rightly be said that Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's vision of transforming Bangladesh into a digital one was instrumental in taking all different projects and programs which ultimately build the digital foundation in the country. This foundation helped the public and private stakeholders creating building blocks across the government and brought innovative micro, over like telemedicine, digital finance, education TV, and many other innovations to combat the COVID-19 in the country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, distinguished delegates from Bangladesh. Now I would like to invite distinguished delegate from Philippines. Please take the floor. Distinguished members of the committee, excellencies, fellow representatives, colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen, good day. Without much ado, let me address broadly yet succinctly the queries under agenda number three in the interest of time on institutional capacities needed. Among the institutional capacities needed is the ability to transcend the insularity of institutional perspective. Institutions, especially the governmental ones, that have a key role to play in the attainment of SDGs in the time of a prolonged pandemic and worsening impacts of climate change, should no longer see themselves as a standalone organizations, but should consider themselves as part of a huge constellation of stakeholders. And as such, they should assume without any prodding the moral duty to take an earnest part in a unified global crusade to turn things around quick smart for the sake of humankind and of the world. And this foundational capacity in turn requires additional capacities, learning agility and execution agility to function as value adding stakeholders in the said global crusade, institutions should learn well and fast, just as much as they should get the right things done in the right way for the right reasons. As things stand, there's a greater urgency to act than ever before, especially in the realm of green growth and sustainable finance, where capacitation and financing gaps remain and traction remains sluggish in certain areas. That is, if we are to ensure that the SDGs remain front and center in the world's attention, even when there is no clear turning point yet in the battle against the global pandemic, even when there's little progress in climate change mitigation and reversal. On regional cooperation, Regional cooperation can address the differentiated capacities of the concerned institutions of member states 
Regional cooperation also has the added benefit of orienting such institutions about the mechanics and the politics of alignment in the interest of integrated action. As with any other conventional form of regional cooperation, the one contemplated under agenda number three can be helpful if and only if it can serve, as it should, as a genuine platform for the cross-pollination of minds, for the exchange of soft technologies, for the sharing of policy advice, for the facilitation of calibrated technical assistance in pursuit of a grand purpose with a corresponding set of well-thought out out outcomes. Come to think of it, there already are existing mechanisms for such cooperation. And what is really an issue here is the adequacy of such mechanisms to move things forward and fast enough. On key policy actions to promote SDG-aligned digital financing, there is absolutely no need to reinvent the wheel insofar as the UN Secretary General's Task Force on Digital Finance has already issued its action agenda, which lays out in broad brushstrokes what could be done. What remains to be done is to ensure the strategic alignment of regional, national, and subnational initiatives therewith. This is easier said than done, however, inasmuch as a great many member states of the UN have varying capacities to take full advantage of the potential of digital finance. That is to say, they have varying degrees of readiness. To be sure, there already are efforts worldwide to engage in fintech at an accelerated pace, but the progress has been uneven thus far. And even where there has been substantial progress, there have been concerns about how subtech and regtech should co-evolve with fintech, about the potential and worrisome entry of big tech into the realm of big finance, about resolving data privacy and data security issues, about the persistent disenfranchisement of a sizable demographic that has insufficient financial literacy, insufficient digital literacy, and insufficient access to modern technology. Interestingly, there also are other efforts driven by regional and national contingencies that seek to introduce various innovations in the name of improved financial inclusion and improved service delivery. And these efforts are worth supporting as well to the extent that they have helped expand the range of social protection, to the extent that they have effected efficient social transfers, to the extent that they have facilitated the attainment of better labor outcomes to the extent that they have helped increase financial resilience. While these efforts do face certain challenges, they form part of the renewed effort to attain the SDGs and for these efforts to endure, the disabling environments in which they are embedded have to be eliminated. After all, contextual variables can spell the difference between what in support of policy actions promoting SDG aligned digital financing. Again, regional cooperation is incredibly important in nudging member states to keep moving in the same and presumably right direction in encouraging them to maintain line of sight to the SDGs, to helping them acquire capacities and reduce vulnerabilities, to holding them accountable for certain results and expectations. While SDG aligned digital financing is not a panacea, it has come to be seen increasingly as an indispensable part of the solution to help humanity meet head on the challenges of the human condition as exacerbated by the prolonged pandemic and the worsening impacts of climate change. And it would be monumental folly to regard SDG aligned digital financing as just another fad, however, in a world upended by disruptions where our notion of the natural order of things is upset, it would be easier to be cynical rather than purposive. Hopefully, hopefully, with regional cooperation pushing for SDG-aligned digital financing as a partial yet necessary solution, things can be kept in perspective. And for that reason, member states can all be all the better for it, despite their current circumstances. Thank you for listening. Good day. Thank you very much, distinguished delegates from Philippines. And uh, now I would like to give the take the floor for the country, India, please. Is it some technical problem? Okay, maybe we we'll, could continue with uh, Russian Federation. 
Okay, and now I would like to uh, give the floor to Russian Federation, please, if you are ready. Russia, would you please unmute and turn on your video, please? Yeah. Госпожа председатель, коллеги, в развитии уже начатой дискуссии о устойчивом восстановлении хотели бы высказать свое мнение в отношении инструментов госполитики, предложенных секретариатом в докладе к сегодняшней сессии комитета, а также поделиться российскими подходами в этой области. В этот раз эксперты особое мнение уделили целому ряду инновационных подходов к постковидному восстановлению. Например, адресные облигации. У этого инструмента есть определенный потенциал, но для его реализации требуется детальная проработка самой идеи и создание необходимой инфраструктуры с учетом национальных особенностей. Это же касается и учета расходов на борьбу с изменением климата в счет погашения долга имеющиеся в этой сфере предложения, в том числе различные типы долговых свопов, целесообразно решать более системно в рамках проблематики содействия международному развитию и облегчения долгового времени развивающихся и наименее развитых стран. Мы осознаем важность стимулирования частных инвестиций в проекты устойчивого развития. Нашими правительственными планами предусмотрено внедрение различных механизмов зеленых облигаций в целях привлечения средств для перевооружения действующих российских предприятий, а также открытия новых производств с низким негативным влиянием на окружающую среду. По нашим прогнозам, общий объем рынка зеленого финансирования в России составит свыше 40, миллионов, прошу прощения, 40 миллиардов долларов США до 2023 года. В целях активизации спроса на устойчивые финансовые инструменты в этом году правительством Российской Федерации разработаны и приняты критерии зеленых проектов и требования квалификации таких проектов. Сейчас продолжается работа над критериями и требованиями к социальным проектам. Такие проекты будут осуществляться в том числе в здравоохранении, в предпринимательстве, в спорте и культуре. Мы в России стремимся, чтобы наши таксономии устойчивого финансирования одновременно отражали и наши национальные приоритеты, и соответствовали международным стандартам. Мы готовы к обмену опытом со странами, членами ИСКАТа в этой области. Уже инициировали такой диалог между странами Северо-Восточной Азии в рамках нашего председательства в расширенной Туманганской инициативе в этом году. В частности, в конце ноября, предварительно 23 ноября, состоится политический диалог РТИ по устойчивым финансам. Конечно же, приглашаем секретариат и заинтересованных стран-членов СКАТа присоединиться к этому мероприятию. С нашей точки зрения, не менее приоритетным вопросом является развитие в странах региона систем цифровых платежей, а также оказание финансовых и государственных услуг. Их востребованность была наглядно продемонстрирована в ходе текущей пандемии. Отмечаем, что необходимо активизировать усилия по сокращению цифровых разрывов в развивающихся и наименее развитых странах Азиатско-Тихоокеанского региона. Это можно сделать за счет наращивания инвестиций в цифровую инфраструктуру, а также цифровые навыки людей и компаний, в особенности тех, кто проживает и ведет бизнес в удаленных и сельских территориях. Мы готовы делиться с партнерами по комиссии, накопленным у нас опытом и практиками цифровизации госсектора, включая создание реестров, учетных систем, облачных баз данных, сервисов дистанционного взаимодействия с гражданами и бизнесом, цифровой идентификации и многое другое. Госпожа председатель, пандемия – это очередная проверка для глобальных и региональных институтов на прочность. Мы твердо выступаем за то, чтобы СКАТА оставался одним из основных координирующих механизмов многостороннего сотрудничества для стран Азиатско-Тихоокеанского региона в сфере макроэкономики, борьбы с нищетой и финансирования развития. Спасибо за внимание. Thank you very much, distinguished delegates from Russian Federation. Uh, now I would like to give a floor to uh, India, please.
respected chair and distinguished delegates, a very good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to present India's statement on Agenda 3. Consistent with the aspirational vision for the, for the financial sector in India, Government of India's development priorities and the need to support the well-being of the people, government has taken several measures in the past few years to augment financing for sustainable development. Some of these measures include introducing national voluntary guidelines for responsible financing, which are financial sector specific guidelines and that combine and adapt international and national best practices. Another one is including lending to social infrastructure and small renewable energy projects within the priority sector uh, targets of the Reserve Bank of India, doubling the loan limits for renewable energy and releasing the national guidelines on responsible, financial, responsible business conduct 2019. So these are some of the measures that Government of India has introduced in the past few years. Moreover, the Securities and Exchange Board of India was one of the early adopters of sustainability reporting for listed entities and had mandated environment, social and governance related disclosures as per the business responsibility report for the top 100 listed entities since 2012. The above requirement of filing business responsibility report was progressively extended to the top 500 entities in the financial year 2015-16 and later to top 1,000 listed entities from the financial year 2019-20. In order to bring in greater transparency through disc disclosure of material ESG-related information to enable market participants to identify and assess sustainability-related risks and opportunities, SEBI, the, the Securities Exchange Board of India, recently in May 2021, issued new sustainability reporting requirements called the Business Responsibility and Sustainability Report, BRSR. This shall replace the existing Business Responsibility Report. The Business Responsibility and Sustainability Report shall be applicable to the top 1,000 listed entities as a, on a mandatory basis from the financial year 2022-23. However, entities can choose to adopt it on a voluntary basis from the current financial year 21-22. The Business Responsibility and Sustainability Report lays considerable emphasis on quantifiable metrics, not only on climate-related aspects, but on social factors too, which allow for easy measurement and comparability. The Business Responsibility and Sustainability Report is aimed at increasing transparency and ensuring that investors have access to standardized disclosures on ESG parameters. The key disclosures sought in this report are overview of the entity's material ESG risks and opportunities, approach to mitigate or adapt to the risks along with financial implications of the same, sustainability-related goals and targets and performance against the same, environment-related disclosures covering aspects such as resource usage, energy and water, air pollutant emissions, greenhouse gas emissions, transition to circular economy, waste generated and waste management practices, biodiversity, etc. And some other social related disclosures like which cover the workforce, value chain, communities and consumers. Mr. Chair, going on to the digital India, Jan Dhan Aadhaar Mobile Trinity has been a game changer for India, enabling us to take forward financial inclusion in a futuristic format by ensuring access to banking facilities to the financially excluded and by linking bank accounts to biometric identification and to mobile numbers. As of mid-September 2021, India has a staggering 432 million beneficiary accounts under Prime Minister's Jan Dhan Yojana, of which more than 65% Jan Dhan accounts are in rural and semi-urban areas. Government of India has in recent years also introduced a series of indigenous platforms to facilitate quick, safe and equitable banking. For instance, the Bharat Interface for Money Bheem UPI application is now a quintessential component of the Indian market. It has also re recently launched the e-rupee voucher facility, reducing the need of internet for financial transactions. 
Moreover, nearly 72% of financial transactions of public sector banks in India are now done through digital channels, with doubling of customers active on digital channels from 34 million in financial year 2019-20 to 76 million in financial year 2021. And the share of financial transactions undertaken through home and mobile channels has increased from 29% in 2018-19 to 76% in 2021. India's fintech industry came to the rescue of people at the time of pandemic by enabling them to carry out critical activities from the safety of their homes, particularly during the lockdown and the second wave of COVID. The Unified Payments Interface, UPI, which was launched in 2016 to allow payments round the clock 365 days a week, 365 days a year, has been very successful. And as of May 2021, India's Unified Payments Interface has has seen participation of 224 banks and recorded 2.6 billion transactions worth over USD 68 billion. With such manifold increase in digital transactions in recent times, India has emerged as a leader in digital payments. Thank you. Thank you very much, distinguished delegates from India. And uh, now I would like to invite uh, the distinguished delegates from Finland. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Excellencies, distinguished uh, delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to address the UNSCAP uh, Committee on Macroeconomic Policy, Poverty Reduction and Financing for Development today. Finland, as a new permanent observer of the UNS Cup, is participating in the committee meetings the first time. Madam Chair, the forthcoming recovery will be a chance to steer our societies and economies towards a more sustainable development path. We not only can, but simply must build forward better. Climate change is altering the climate and weather patterns around the globe as we speak. We are losing biodiversity in an accelerating pace. Finland has set an ambitious target to achieve carbon neutrality by 2035. Finland believes that in order for the world to be effective in our battle against climate change, we, we need to mainstream it in all our financing decisions. And this is why our finance minister initiated the Coalition of Finance Ministers for Climate Action. Finance ministers from over 60 countries have already joined in coalition of, of finance ministers for climate action. Uh, we are especially happy that several countries in the Asia and the Pacific joined the coalition already. Currently, Finland and Indonesia co-chair the coalition. The coalition is supported by 20 in institutional partners with secretariat in the World Bank in close cooperation with the IMF. The Coalition of Finance Ministers for Climate Action brings together fiscal and economic uh, policymakers in leading the global climate response and in securing a, a just transition towards low carbon and resilient development. The key objective of the coalition is to find ways how to best integrate climate aspects as an integral part of economic and finance policies. The coalition can help by bringing finance ministers together to share experiences and design economic policies. The coalition works together uh, towards solutions and contributes to the joint global efforts. Some basic principles of the coalition are, first, this is a coalition of like-minded countries that does not negotiate or argue on climate goals. Second, there is no obligation to commit to any particular goal but the members are encouraged to work to align their policies according to so-called Helsinki principles and govern the coalition's work. The co uh, six Helsinki principles are, first, align policies with the Paris Agreement. Second, share experiences and expertise. Third, promote carbon rising measures. Fourth, mainstream climate in economic policies. 
Fifth, mobilize climate finance. Sixth, engage in nationally determined contributions. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, the coalition warmly welcomes new members to share their experience and knowledge and to work closely together towards common climate friendly future. The coalition has been working lately on the following themes. Promoting a green recovery from COVID-19 crises, supporting the enhanced involvement of finance ministers in design of climate policies, analyzing long-term transition strategies and the fiscal impacts of carbon neutrality, deepen our understanding on carbon pricing policies, promoting the greening of financial systems, identifying ways to include climate in macro modeling, enhancing understanding on biodiversity loss and its economic implications. We see that the coalition can pay, play a pivotal, pivotal role globally in promoting green recovery from COVID-19, advancing carbon pricing and bringing biodiversity related financial risk considerations into the picture. In addition to our intervention today, Mr. Pekka Moren, Special Representative of uh, Minister of Finance of Finland and Co-Chair of the Coalition of Finance Ministers uh, for Climate Action, is participating at the committee side event on Friday on regional conversation uh, on financing for development. Finland believes that UNSCAP could benefit from the extensive work of the Coalition of Finance Ministers for Climate Action. We remain ready to support and facilitate any future cooperation in this area. I thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, distinguished delegates from Finland. And um, are there any government who wish to speak before I open the floor to uh, designated representative of UN bodies and specialized agencies and intergovernment organization? I see none. Uh, the floor is now open to designated representative of UN bodies and specialized agencies and intergovernmental organization. We don't have. No. Uh, I could. I see none. And now I would like to invite. Um, Designated representative, okay, we don't have it. And um, now we will, would like to invite civil society organization and other entities. I see none. And um, if there are any other entities who would like to speak. I see none, and thank you very much. That, uh, this concludes our discussion on agenda item three. We shall now take uh, up agenda item four, review of activities carried out in 2020 and 2021 in response to the request of the committee at its second session and uh, the coronavirus disease pandemic, consideration of the future focus on of the sub-program, as uh, contains in uh, SCAP slash CMPF slash 2021 three. Uh, may I now invite uh, the Secretary to introduce the agenda item. After the presentation, the floor will be open for formal uh, statement by delegation and statement from the other register uh, participant at this meeting. And um, so it's my pleasure to invite Mr. Hamza Ali Malik, Director, Microeconomic Policy and Financing for Development Division, to take the floor and introduce uh, the agenda item for Mr. Malik, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, Honorable Chair, Vice Chairs. The document SCAP slash CMPF slash 2021 slash three provides an overview of the implementation by the Secretariat of the requests of the committee 
on macroeconomic policy, poverty reduction, and financing for development at its second session that was held in November 2019. The document also provides a synopsis of the additional research and capacity building work undertaken by the Secretariat in response to the COVID-19 pandemic since it began in early 2020. I invite the committee to provide feedback to the Secretariat with regards to the steps taken by the Secretariat in response to the committee's requests and its COVID-19 related work. The committee may also wish to provide guidance to the Secretariat about which research and capacity building activities it considers most useful for the specific circumstances of individual countries. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, as you know, the committee holds its sessions once in two years and discusses emerging economic challenges and financing issues that have a bearing on the pursuit of the 2030 agenda. A two-year period between the two sessions of the committee, however, is a somewhat long time to respond to emerging policy issues and provide timely suggestions to the Secretariat to give shape to its research and capacity building activities. Moreover, since most issues that are discussed in this committee, such as economic conditions and prospects, financing strategies, are of substantive nature, its deliberations can benefit from participation of government officials that are experts in those areas. Thus, it would be helpful to have a mechanism that facilitates a more regular and substantive communication on such issues between the committee and the secretariat and relevant government ministries, particularly ministries of finance. To this end, the committee may wish to consider establishing a consultative group on financing strategies for the sustainable development goals. We have also prepared an information note SCAP slash CMPF slash INF slash one that contains some initial ideas for the terms of reference of the suggested consultative group. We prepared these initial ideas for the consideration of member states based on the request of some delegations for more details about the proposed consultative group. I look forward to your feedback. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Malik. And now I would like to give the floor to Ms. Isabella Hang, Chief of Program Planning and Budget Section, Strategy and Program Management Division, to deliver a presentation on consideration of the future focus of the sub-program. Ms. Hang, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, for giving me the floor. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for the opportunity to present part of agenda item four, consideration of the future focus of the subprogram. In this presentation, I will quickly walk you through the strategy and result for subprogram one, macroeconomic policy, poverty reduction, and financing for development in the ESCA proposed program plan for 2022. A few projects of the subprogram that contributes to the cross-cutting areas and the 2022 and 2023 program planning process. Next slide, please. In, the, in 2022, the subprogram will continue to focus on promoting a more balanced and multidimensional development approach. Pay specific attention to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and other systemic and persistent development challenges advanced policies and potential pathways for such an economic transitions towards sustainable development through research and knowledge product, capacity building and technical assistance and advocacy, as well as intergovernmental coordination. The subprogram also plans to support member states on issues related to COVID-19 by focusing on macroeconomic and financing for development policies that promote economic transformation towards sustainable development and more resilient economies. The above mentioned work is expected to result in an improved understanding of the impact of economic policies on sustainable development enhance capacity of policymakers to mainstream and align economic policies and financing strategies 
with sustainable development objectives, a greater ability of member states to mobilize and allocate financial resources for sustainable development, and the planned support on issues related to COVID-19 is expected to result in the advancement and greater scope of economic recovery measures that integrate sustainable development and more resilient economies. Next slide, please. Further to highlight the work of the sub-program, in the 2022 program plan, each sub-program presents four results. These are one performance result for 2020 and three planned results. The highlighted performance result for 2020 is better informed policy making by member states in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. In addition to that are the three planned results. Result one is the 2020 plan result titled Enhanced Understanding of Financing Needs and Strategies for the Implementation of Sustainable Development Goals. Result two is the 2021 planned result titled Asia-Pacific Countries Take Action to Transform Their Economies for Sustainable Development. And result three is the 2022 planned result titled Enhanced Capacity of Member States in Designing Policies and Strategies for Resilient Economies. Next slide, please. In addition to the work presented under program 16, shown earlier, the work of the subprogram is also complemented by various projects that also contributes to the cross-cutting areas, which are poverty reduction and balance integration of the three pillars of sustainable development, gender equality, and priority needs of LDCs, LLDCs, or SIDS. Some of these projects are Aligning policy and financing with SDG towards an integrated national financing framework. Closing the last mile, precise and targeted poverty reduction in China. Response and recovery, mobilizing financial resources for development in the time of COVID-19. Supporting the countries with special needs in Asia Pacific in meeting the challenge of resource mobilization for achieving the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Next slide, please. Now, the following two diagrams that I'm going to show you will give the typical timeline of annual planning process. So concerning the 2022 proposed program plan, the next step is for ESCAP proposed program budget, which include the program plan, to be submitted to the fifth committee for the General Assembly's approval by the end of this year. Next slide, please. The 2023 proposed program plan will be prepared shortly and will be shared with ACPR by mid-January 2022. It will then be presented to the Commission at its 78th session in May 2022. Subsequent to that, it will be submitted to the Committee for Program and Coordination and to the Advisory Committee on Administrative and Budgetary Question for deliberation, normally in June. Finally, it will be submitted to the Fifth Committee of the General Assembly by the end of 2022 for approval. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take any question you may have. Thank you, Ms. Hank, for the presentation. And uh, now I would like to open the floor for statement by delegation. And I would like to invite the distinguished delegates from China. Please take the floor. It's probably some technical. Okay, it's okay. Um, Chinese okay. delegation. Would you mind, please press request to speak button.
Please, China, you have a floor. Thank 同时呢，我们也对建立该协商小组呢持积极态度。谢谢。Thank you very much, distinguished delegates from China. Now, Pakistan. Now, uh, I would like to invite distinguished delegates from Pakistan. Please take the floor. Pakistan. Excellency, please turn on your... Yes, thank you. Madam, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Madam Chair, I cannot hear you. You, you can speak. We can hear you. Delegate for speaking. We can I hear you. Mute myself and turn off my video till the problem is resolved. We have some technical problem, and probably we should continue. Now I would like to invite the distinguished delegates from France. Please take the floor. I think it's okay. Can you hear me? Thank you. We can hear you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much to UNSC for this uh, for this conference. Uh, I'm pleased to let you know that France would like uh, also to support the creation of a consultative group on the financing of, of the uh, Sustainable Development Goals, uh, which remains a crucial issue in order to achieve the 2030 agenda, especially, of course, in the COVID and the post-COVID context. Thank you. Thank you very much, distinguished delegates from France. And now uh, I would like to invite distinguished guests from Japan. Uh, please take the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for a detailed explanation of the uh, consultative group on financing strategy. Uh, Japan tried to <clears throat> make sure that uh, uh, this uh, consultative uh, group has no uh, uh, budget implication in its activities. And uh, uh, so, our uh, comment on this uh, group, uh, the participation uh, of this such a group should be voluntary and uh, the member should not be um, with uh, a specific uh, mem member states and uh, uh, the group should be open to every member states and uh, um, Holding the meetings and its outcome should be uh, shared in a transparent manner. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, distinguished guests from Japan. And, uh, and uh, now I could invite 
Pakistan, please take a floor. Chairperson, good morning. Uh, to good you. morning. Uh, Pakistan is pleased to take note of the focused work that the Secretariat has done to implement the request that the member states shared two years ago. Uh, being the new permanent representative of Pakistan to the SCAP, I have uh, found the comprehensive update provided in the documents, uh, including the program uh, planning process, highly focused and very informative. Uh, I have also found it particularly beneficial to understand the broad range and wide scope of the Secretariat's work in the area of micro policy and financing. The work is indeed critical and necessary. Pakistan would like to request, make two requests uh, to the Secretariat to continue this important work and support us in achieving the SDGs and following are our two specific requests to the Secretariat. One, uh, Pakistan requests the Secretariat to provide further analysis and targeted uh, technical assistance on issues that can support us on one, increasing our financial space and two, to enhance financial investments. The other suggestion which we strongly support is the Secretariat's proposed idea to establish a consultative group on financing strategies for the SDGs, uh, consisting of expert and officials nominated by us. Uh, we feel that this will facilitate effective communication between uh, the ministry officials back in the capital and the secretariat on economic and financing, fin uh, financing issues. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, distinguished guests from uh, Pakistan. And um, I would like to ask secretariat if they have any comments for the, uh, for the request of the Pakistan? No, no, comment. no comment, please. Uh, oh, okay, and now I would like to continue uh, with the delegates from Bhutan. Bhutan, could you please press the button? We cannot see you and we cannot hear you. Bhutan? Maybe I will continue and can I invite a representative, distinguished representative from Finland? Finland, you have, take the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, just to uh, 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 also reiterate that uh, the Secretariat has done excellent uh, work on, on this area, and, and we also see benefits to, to establish a consultative group uh, or for between the ministries of finance and uh, to consider these issues and sustainable development goals uh, uh, during the next uh, two-year period. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Representative from uh, Finland. And now I would like to uh, invite uh, Representative of Sri Lanka. Please take the floor. Yes. Distinguished academics, I take this opportunity to congratulation of the government of Sri Lanka to the Committee on Microeconomic Policy 
private area production and financing for development for activities carried out in 2020 and 2021 despite the unprecedented challenges of COVID-19. Sri Lanka also appreciates the efforts of the committee in reorienting the research, technical assistance, and capacity building programs towards assisting member states to overcome the challenges of the pandemic. In this context, Sri Lanka wishes to express its support for the initiative of establishing a consultative committee on financing strategies for the Sustainable Development Goals. Accordingly, Sri Lanka wishes to propose Honorable Governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka to coordinate the committee for its work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, distinguished delegates from Sri Lanka. And um, it's any uh, other governmental who wish to speak before I open the floor to distinguished representative of UN bodies and specialized agencies and intergovernmental organization. Okay, I could see Bhutan. Okay, please, uh, representative from Bhutan, take the floor. Delegate from Bhutan, please kindly unmute and turn on your video. Thank you. Good morning, uh, everybody. So on behalf of RGOB, the Minister of Finance wishes to incorporate the statement of our Honorable Finance Minister once again at the opening in the preceding proceeding of this committee sessions, particularly in the areas of green bond, innovative financing like PPP, digitization transformation in the areas like artificial intelligence, like AI and big data and sustainable financing. At the same time, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the UNSCAP for rendering support in assisting Bhutan in the development of fast ever sovereign bond issuance in this in 2020, a technical assistance on the digital transformation in Bhutan was approved on 9 December 2020. Moving forward, a joint MSME finance workshop was escape and the Minister of Finance of Bhutan will be conducted in either February or March in 2022. On the similar note, I will look forward to many more of productive engagement with the UNESCO in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, distinguished delegates from Bhutan. Now, I, is any other government who wish to speak before I open the floor to designated representative of UN bodies and specialized agencies and intergovernmental organization? I see none. And, uh, the floor is now open to designated representative of UN bodies and specialized agencies and intergovernmental organization. I see none. Now I would like to invite uh, representative from UN body specialized, um, excuse me, from the civil society organization and other entities. I could see none and um, I, now I would like to, I could see none from the UN bodies, I could see none from the civil uh, society organization, and, uh, and, and I would like to say um, I see none, and, and thank you very much. It, we will uh, uh, probably close the uh, discussion with agenda item four. Okay, let me check again. No, we don't have anyone. Okay, uh, I see none. Thank you very much for your contribution to the discussion this agenda item. 
With no further comments, I would like to inform all delegates that the committee will resume pro uh, properly at uh, 2 p.m. Bangkok time to consider agenda no number five, dates and venue of the fourth session of the committee, and agenda item six, other matters. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you.